One of the things that we don't know much about is what happens underground. And to give you sort of an overall idea of what goes on is, and theoretically a healthy cubic yard of soil has more living creatures in it than there are people on the earth. Of course, the definition of a healthy soil is always up to debate. So there's an awful lot of activity that goes on there. And the trees and the shrubs and all those things actually add to that activity. And they add to that activity by, in reality, 20% of what a tree produces actually goes down into the roots and is sloughed off into the surrounding soil. That's why when you pull out the soil, our tree's roots out of the ground, you'll see a little round thing there and say, oh, that must be the roots holding on to it. No, that's actually the, the uh, better term, a snot that the tree released and is holding that all together. And that's where the hugest amount of activity goes on on a tree root. So by saying that, we know damn little about what goes on underground, and I'm about to tell you what little I know, and hopefully we can get together sometime and have some more ideas. But it is extensive, we have not done a very good job of looking at it, and is by far the most critical thing that has to happen for a tree, shrub, or vine, or whatever, to survive. First of all, you gotta get the idea that trees weren't put on this earth to be transplanted. And any nurseryman that challenges himself to transplant that tree is a thing where you might wanna come with a large kegger, a good, good many hot dogs, and a cut chair or two to watch him dig these up. Tree roots, for all intents and purposes, adapt to their areas and they move according to wetness, dryness, nutrients, all of those affect where tree roots go. This tree root always fascinated me. It was out west and it found a crack and the rocks and went about six feet over and then dove into the ground. So tree roots are very opportunistic. They move in areas that we don't realize they get to one thing we should always remember, though, is a tree root is approximately three to five times out the height of the tree. So a 50-foot tree will have roots anywhere from 150 to 250 feet out. So they get around. And not all of the concentration, obviously, is out that far, but they're out there. Now, what has the nursery industry done for me recently? Well, we're working on this, but this is bad news. And unfortunately, there's still a bunch of this out there. And as a consumer, you're going to have to be aware of that. And when you see this type of thing, you should reject it. That plant obviously has been in the container too long and for all intents and purposes is worthless. So what we call, if you bought that tree from us, we would call that a donation. That's, of course, a donation to us. And uh, bottom line is a tree of that type will not survive, will not do well down the road, and for all intents and purposes, should never have been sold in the first place. And the only way you get to find this out is I take my wife and myself to garden centers, and while I have them distract them, I'm over there pulling the containers out. <laughs> and I have gotten in trouble a couple of times because sometimes it was just potted and the soil all falls on the ground or it's been in there too long. But bottom line is this type of thing is not acceptable, and you as a consumer should never, ever accept it. These are bare root trees brought in uh, recently for, from a friend of mine. He called me up, told me to come on over. This happens to be a swamp white oak. The, uh, the about 15% of the trees that he got were like this. That's a lousy root. No, uh, for all intents and purposes, that plant will not function well for him. This is a dead tree, okay? It was shipped and, uh, and this is what it looked like Hopefully, as we go forward, the trees that are more difficult to grow, and that's primarily what we're talking about in this uh, situations are, they do a better job of putting roots on it. And we have the potential to do that. We do not do it, at least not to the extent that we should. So what does a tree that has good roots look like? Whoops, I got ahead of myself there. What happens to a tree when we cut it like that? One of the things we know about physiology of the tree is that when you cut that root, you see that dark spot in there, that dark spot dies. Now, unlike the trunk where we have dead wood inside of it for all intents and purposes, the roots never die. They are always there, they are always functioning, and they're always used for storage. So, in essence, that part has been taken away from the tree. The end result is what happens to the tree when that happens is that we get frost cracking. Now frost cracking is very similar 
to a, 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 I'm a grandfather now, I didn't think I'd ever get there. Um, and the child is always coming over and he's always sprouting new teeth. And every time he has a cold or a cough or all those things, it's the teeth. Well, every time we see frost cracking on a tree, it's frost cracking. The reality of the thing is that frost cracking is a symptom of other issues, particularly underground. In this case, it could be a root, and frequently our roots. It can also be a graft that's gone bad. So there are other issues that create frost cracking besides actual frost cracking. Now, what happens on this is that where that dead spot is, we still get production of roots, but that dead spot will never come back. So when they slice that thing and they happen to kill that root, that's what happens. Even though the outside is functioning and will eventually get big enough, that in part will be dead forever. This is a system um, that, that we use that, that is out there uh, that actually that hole on that knit bag is 5 64 diameter. And when the root hits that, it creates all these little roots that go through, the, through that hole. And it also creates a bulbous end on the, uh, the plant right there where all the carbohydrates are stored. What happens is as the root goes through those holes, they actually reduce the carbohydrate storage on the outside, but on the inside increase it. And this is what it looks like when it's up against the fabric. You can see that bulbous end on it. And when you slice that root, uh, and that's exactly what happens when they break it off for the uh, uh, planting. You can see there's a lot of uh, uh, live tissue in there. A better shot is this one, where you can actually see the dyed tissue that is star storage for carbohydrates. So we have a system potentially where we can actually break roots off and we don't hurt ends. So that's one of the things that, as an industry, we should look more seriously to because what happens when we have this healthy tip. You get root rejuvenation almost immediately. And it's called the four inch rule. And the four inch rule means within four inches of that cut, that's where all the roots are. So if I'm a tree and you cut my root off out there somewhere, say five feet off, there are no new roots to start at, at the bottom of me. They all start out there at that cut. So in essence, if we can keep that cut healthy, we can get dramatic increase in roots. And this is critical for the survival of the tree because if it can get those roots out and get going, they can uh, obviously, and, and the more roots it gets, the more ability it has to use that soil and the, with the nutrients and the moisture and all the other things associated with that. And a real ball and burlap situation, which is the current system in most of the nursery industry, you can see what happens when you cut the ball, which is that circle in the middle, and how many roots we leave behind. We leave a tremendous amount out in the field. This one was also dragged when it was transplanted in a, in a tree planting thing, and you can see on the far away from me that the uh, more roots than there are on the up, upside. What do we really want? This is what we really want. And this is obtainable, and there are a number of systems out there that do it, and you gotta start from the very beginning and the more roots you have, and that's all been washed out, so those roots don't droop down naturally. They're actually pointing out to the sides. But that, that's the kind of root system that we have tried to obtain. That's one of the root systems I would like to obtain. Here's another one where it's actually still on the ball. The roots are still hanging down a little bit, but if it was just stripped off, those roots would be pointing out and going into the soil. Remember, that about the top 18 inches of the soil horizon, that's where the 90 or 95% of the roots are. The tap root is a figment of our imagination, not in the sense that it doesn't exist, but in the sense that it plays a very minor role after the tree is established. In establishment of the tree, the tap root is critical because it gets down to where there's moisture and keeps that plant alive. But trees in general do not create new tap roots in the sense that as those roots go out, they put sinkers down. They'll put maybe a few sinkers down, but the vast majority of the roots are out horizontally. And that makes a lot of sense because if a tree's not going to stand if it just has a tap root. It needs those horizontal roots in order to help it stand and take the pressure of the wind and the lawnmowers that occasionally hit it. Mm -hmm.